All right, so how do you use subaligner when you have delay speakers? And how do you practice with subaligner when you use DMB array calc? That's what I'm gonna talk about in today's video. So this is part of the subaligner Q&A series. If you have any questions about subaligner, please put them as comments below this video. So Pablo sent in this question. He said, if I have, a, if I have three DMB T10 array per side, and one T10 per side on a tripod to reinforce the back of the room, how do I implement the delay in the calculation? So as with some of these other questions, I think um, the concept is really where is the alignment done? Because again, subaligner really only cares about distance offsets. And so it's our job as the user to choose that alignment position and decide where to point our laser. So if we take a look at our design here, let's go over to the 3D plot. We can see our various sources here. So main, sub, and then these delay speakers. And I think this one is actually a little bit more simple to think about than Pablo's previous question because there are less sources. And so our main system up here is really covering a majority of the audience. And these delay speakers back here are really just supporting the mains to you know, improve intelligibility, maybe restore some of the high frequencies, the very high frequencies lost to air loss. Um, and so we're going to do our alignment almost as though these speakers were not here. But I'm also gonna show you how to align your delay speakers using subaligner. So let's talk about just doing this in the field first, and then we'll see about practicing with it in DMB array calc. Okay, so the first step is just to choose an alignment position. Now, as is recommended in Subaligner, when you click on this little guy here, it's gonna recommend that you do it at front of house. Um, nine times out of 10, the front of house position is going to work. But if we don't know where front of house is, um, or we are more flexible, or we just want an alternative position, then for this type of system, where we have you know, an offset in the vertical plane here, mains are right above the subs, uh, and they're both gonna play down this way. And so from left to right, we don't have much offset, but then from front to back, that's where the main offset will be. That's where the asymmetry is. So in the complete guide to measurement microphone placement for subwoofer alignment, um, I call this asymmetry in the vertical plane. And I think the easiest way to decide on alignment position in this case is to use the sub align calculator. Um, and you can download that as an app now. So let me open that up. So this is a calculator originally created by Merlin Van Veen and then put into a little standalone form by Pavel who also creates open sound meter. And so we can use this to determine the depth of our alignment position. And then in terms of width, we'll just use on axis with one of these sides. You would use that to determine your alignment position. So let's say that that alignment position is here. Then you would point your laser at the main, put that into subliner for your distance, then point your laser at the sub and put that into subliner for your distance. And then you would get a result and then you would listen to it and see if it worked. And it's that simple. So there are two main reasons why when it comes to this particular alignment that I'm kind of ignoring these. The first one is that up here, we have six of them. That's a three to one power ratio, which is 10 dB. And so compared to these big guys up here, these little guys up here aren't doing much. Plus, we're not gonna probably run these at full power. We'll probably put our measurement microphone back here while we measure the main array, and then we'll slowly bring these guys up in level until we get the result that we want here, which is restoring that loss, high frequency loss, improving intelligibility and ripple and stuff like that. So we expect that this there's not going to be a lot happening here. Also, these guys here, let me get rid of some of these lines. These guys back here are getting delayed back to the mains because since they're delay speakers, we're assuming that everyone here in this last row is listening to the mains, mostly. They're still getting most of their material from the mains, and we're just bringing in this delay speaker to support a little bit. 
So this delay speaker is getting back, delayed back to the mains, which is the second reason why I think it makes sense to just focus on this relationship up here. And then this guy either won't matter that much or, you know, he's getting delayed back to the mains anyway, so it should all work out. Okay, so that's how I would do it in the field. Now let's talk about how you could actually practice this in Subaligner um, so that you can, you know, prepare for when you get into the field and make everything easier on yourself. Here's one little hoop you're gonna have to jump through. I've been doing most of my demos up till now with Map3D, and in Map3D we have this little measurement tool, right? So we can basically, uh, you know, click on any point and then measure up to another point and it'll say, hey, that's 10 meters and that's 12 meters or whatever. I don't know how to do that in DMB, uh, array calc, and as far as I know, there is no way to do that. So the workaround that I'm gonna recommend for you is to look at some triangles. What do I mean by that? Well, if, let's look at a side view. So let's just say that we have decided to put our alignment position here and we need to know this distance here. Well, we can use a triangle solver or Pythagorean's theorem because we know this distance and we know this distance. This distance here is simply uh, the height of the speaker from the ground minus the height of the audience plane, oops, audience plane. And this distance here is simply the depth of here. It's easy because our speakers are at zero. And so whatever the depth is here, that's this leg. And then we just put that into a triangle solver and then we get this distance here. So let's do that. So the first thing we wanna do is decide on an alignment position. So let's go back to the subaligned app here and let's make some decisions. So where do we want the frequency to be? Well, when I'm picking a frequency here, I typically pick the highest frequency in the acoustic crossover region. How do we figure that out? Well, subaligner can help us with that. So if we don't worry about any of these numbers at all, you can just put in ones here. then it'll still generate the plot that we expect to see. And when we look at this plot, we can easily see the acoustic crossover because it is defined by these dark lines here. And uh, wherever you see the black target and the pink sum, that represents the beginning and the end of the crossover region. And so all I have to do is look at the last frequency that has one of these values and it's 249. So I'll put in 249 hertz here. And commonly the max offset I will use is 120 degrees because that's the end of the coupling zone that guarantees that I'll, at least I will not go into cancellation at the last seat in the last row. Now we just need to put in the positions of our speakers. So I know that my mains are four meters tall, sorry. They start at zero and then they're four meters up in the air. And then my sub is just on the ground, okay? And the audience plane starts at two meters and is 1.2 meters high. And then it goes to 20 meters and is 1.2 meters high. And I just have all this memorized because I've been working on this design, but I can zoom out here and show you that here it is, starts at two meters, goes to 20 meters. Maybe it would be easier to look at it here. Here you can see it starts at two meters and then this value here goes to 20 meters. And I have set it to be 1.2 meters high as the listening height. Okay, and as we're filling in these details, all of these all of these graphs are updating automatically all the time. So we don't have to do anything else just need to check the environment. Yep, that's the correct temperature that I'm using in array calc. And so I get a suggestion here for the alignment position, which is 4.72 meters depth. And I'm also just gonna point out to you 
this is the value I chose. So alignment at 120 degrees, max offset. So here's zero degrees. And then I go up, 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 very last row, 120 degrees. I can see the value up here. And the only reason I might change this is if the value down here at the first row was less than 120 degrees. Then I would try to split the difference so that this number up here and this number back here were the same. Otherwise, I'll just leave it at 128, 120 degrees, and these people in maybe the first row here will experience some cancellation. But we effectively balanced out the errors and minimized our risk here. So one thing about DMB array calc is that you, it seems to me that you cannot type that value in automatically. So I want to put in 4.72 meters, but you can't type in anything here as far as I can tell. All you can do is move this up and down. So I'll just pick the closest value, 4.72, which is 5.6 meters, okay? And then the next step, as we talked about, is to figure out this distance to the mains. So I just need to know this distance and this distance of my triangle. And if you just go to Google and you type in solve right triangle, you'll get this guy. Um, and so you can put in your A and B leg. So how tall is my A leg? Well, I know that my speakers are four meters up in the air, but I also need to subtract the audience height. So for this procedure, I just like using Math Notepad. I feel like it's a little bit easier, but you could also use this app. It, it's helpful. So over here in Math Notepad, I'll put in those values. So I'll put in four meters minus the height of the audience. And for that B leg, okay, so just to show you, this is A, maybe I should use a different color. There's my A leg, and then there's my B leg, and then the answer we'll get is C, okay? So how do I figure out B? Well, it's just this depth, right? So I've chosen 5.6 meters over here, five, because my speakers are at zero meters, 5.6 meters. And so now I know that C leg, the distance from my alignment position to my main speaker is 6.26 meters. So I can just copy this and throw it into Subaligner. So I'm back here at the beginning. I have my main speaker selected. There are uh, six of them, no, eight of them total in the room. There's my distance. Now what about the distance to the sub? Well, this one's a little bit easier because now I need to figure out this um, little triangle here. So this A leg is just gonna be the height of the audience, and then the B leg is exactly the same. So 5.72 meters is the distance, and I have two of these B4 subs in there. So then Subaligner is going to give us a suggestion of 1.72 milliseconds for the delay, so let's try that out. First of all, before doing anything, I just take a look at this graph here and see that, yes, in fact, we do have an alignment problem. If I were to turn these on right now, they would not be completely aligned. So I'll try putting this solution into the delay sub thing here. And 5.7, but what I really want is 1.74. I guess I didn't copy it correctly. And there we go. It looks pretty good. And this is something that I want you to watch out for in a Raycalc. A Raycalc just always defaults to telling you that this is the crossover region, right? This is the acoustic crossover that you need to look at. And it's always the same. Um, I feel like this is a little bit confusing because what if you turn up your main 30 dB? Of course, the acoustic crossover region is going to shift. What if you turn your subs up by 30 dB? So this, this little pictogram here maybe is helpful, but I feel like it's kind of misleading. So I, I think a better way is to take a look at the plot here or just look at your own measurements and look at where the crossover region starts and ends. So it starts at about 80 hertz and goes up to about 250. So then I'll just draw this in here to help with my eyes. 
So here's 100. So here's 9, 8. And then here's 100. Here's 200. And so this is probably 250. So this is really the region that I want to focus on. Okay. All right. That's the sub alignment. So what about the delay alignment? What about aligning these fill speakers to our mains? Well, we can also use subliner to help with that. All we need to do is set it to one-to-one -to -one matched reference. One-to-one -one matched reference is the very first option up here at the top. And uh, I don't really care about the values right now. I really just care about the distances. So we're going to need to run our triangle solver again. Uh, so similar thing here, except now I'm using this position back here, not this position. So my A leg is going to be exactly the same as before. My speakers are four meters up in the air and I just subtract the listening plane height. My B leg though is quite a bit deeper. Now we're all the way back here at 20 meters. And these numbers are a little bit confusing. It's putting the zero here for some reason. But if we go and look at the venue here, we see that zero is actually here and that 20 is here. So I'm not sure if what's going on there, but I'm going to go ahead and put in 20 here. And so we get a C leg of almost the same. It's almost the same as 20 meters. And then for our fill speaker here, our fill speakers are not very high up in the air. They're only at, looks like only two meters up in the air. So I'm actually going to draw a triangle sideways this time. So instead of vertically, let's look at, um, we want to figure out this value here. So let's look at an A leg and a B leg here. So I know that that this audience plane is um, 20 meters wide. And so each of these squares is going to be five meters. And I know that this guy here is out at uh, just one meter away from the audience. Uh, here it is 11 meters here. So that's pretty easy to figure out. It's just five plus one. So that a leg is six meters. And then that B leg, I know that these guys are at 15. And I know that the alignment position is at 20. So 20 minus 15 is five. And then I have the C leg of 7.8 meters. So Subliner recommends or suggests, and it's throwing an error here because I forgot to uh, remove one of those other things. So here we need to switch this all to one-to-one -one matched reference. And Subliner recommends 36 milliseconds here. So let's just try dropping that in. So I put in 36 milliseconds and there we go. We've got it lined up here. It'd be nice to just see one side solo. So I'll turn off this side and I'll turn off that. So now we just have the left side playing. So now I can see these are almost right on top of each other. Maybe it should be one more. There we go. So I was a tenth of a millisecond off. And so now I would just copy this and put it in the other side. What we see at the moment is just a lot of power alley because our mains and subs are uncoupled. So it might be more helpful to just mute one side. Um, so the way that I did that on the subs is just to uh, unlink them here, making them uh, not symmetrical anymore. And then I can just turn one of these down, you know, 50 dB. And now we can just look at one side and now I can take the delay out and we'll see, you know, this area of a summation kind of shrink and then put the delay back in and see it improve. So I hope this is helpful for you. I'd love to know if you have found any novel ways to use Subaligner in DMB at Raycalc or any other uh, modeling or prediction software and let me know in the comments. All right, thanks.